guys, it's Lord Ali, and this should be an interesting reaction because, as you see, I am at my parents' house for the weekend, and uh, the lighting is awful in this room because I don't have my old setup, so the lighting's weird, the setup's weird, everything's weird, but I don't care because it's Ruby. I don't, I could care less about the video quality right now. I. I'm so excited. But before I get to the reaction, I want to thank my newest patrons on Patreon, which are Christian King, Raven, Zom, and the Undead Fish, which I love your username. But <laughs> thank you guys so much for donating. It helps me out so much. And if anyone else would like to check out my Patreon and the perks I give out for different tiers, links in the description as usual. But anyway, let's get on to Ruby. Because, wow, things have things have taken a turn. Things have taken quite the turn. We had the new character everyone was looking forward to die after five minutes. We had Adam somehow become even more of a dick than he already was. Weiss is taken captive by Yang's mom. And, uh, yeah, things just aren't going great for everyone. And things have just gotten so extra <laughs> this volume everything is a life or death situation which is terrifying but awesome but terrifying and i just i don't know what else i can say except for watching the stupid episode it's chapter three unforeseen complications and the thumbnail makes it look like we're gonna be spending some time in menagerie so we may get to see the <sighs> fallout of the events of the end of the last chapter Let's do this. With a fairy tale back to the show, back to the wall, and there's nowhere to go. Hopeless and desperate on the first. Things looking bleak and they're bound to get worse. I got the beginning of it memorized. It's such a good opening. I love it so much. It's like up there with Volume 3's opening for me now. And I loved Volume 3's opening. Mm, yep. Menagerie. Someone tells me they just got the news. That's a lot of pacing. Are you ready? Oh, yes. they don't have the news yet. It won't be easy for the people to hear. He's about to the give a speech. Often isn't. I know they'll do the right thing. I don't think they know yet. <clears throat> you got this. Aww. He's gonna punch him. <laughs> or not. Okay, cool. Nice little moment. I love Sun. He deserves all the happiness in the world. Thank you all for assembling here. I wanted to take time to address some of the rumors that have been circulating around our island. I bet this I isn't going to go that it well. It is important for the people of this territory to understand the truth. No matter how you feel about the human race, 
I think we can all agree that the event now known as the Fall of Beacon was a tragedy. A tragedy that will set both man and Fauna's kind back. While the main aggressor is still unknown, we do have official confirmation that Adam Torres, the leader of a powerful splinter group working inside the White Fang, was partially responsible for these attacks. His actions not only tarnished the reputation of an organization originally created to bring peace and equality to all, but to our entire race. With each day that this man remains unpunished, it becomes increasingly difficult to condemn those that look it's a down upon Nice us. speech, Gira. Something bad's gonna happen soon, I bet, though. Recently, a spy from this same splinter group set their sights on this very home. My own daughter, Blake, and her friend did their very best to apprehend this individual. While they were unsuccessful after being physically assaulted and seriously injured, they were successful in obtaining the assailant's scroll. With this, we have been able to ascertain that Adam Taurus has plans to overthrow the current leader of the White Fang, Sienna Khan, and did. take over the reins himself. He did. His radical plans do not stop there. The documents on this scroll proclaim his next target to be Haven Academy and its attached CCT tower. Their plan is to strike on the last full moon before the beginning of the fall semester, roughly mm. two months from today. I have sent my swiftest messenger to the government of Mistral, but I believe we have a greater responsibility. My relationship with the White Fang has been an interesting one. Years ago, I led the organization to help try and create a world where I and every Faunus who wished could walk alongside the human race. And while I believe we made great strides toward this goal, it was made clear to me that the people both in and out of the White Fang wanted faster results. So I stepped mm -hmm. down, and Sienna Khan was appointed as my successor. It's true that I do not fully condone many of her methods. What I do condone is what Sienna fights for. The idea that the Faunus and humans are, and should be, equal. Mm -hmm. Adam Taurus does not seem to have that goal in mind. Nope, not what at all. What he has done benefits no one but himself. I think it's time that the Faunus showed the world that we are equals. Time that we snuff out this splinter and restore the White Fang to what it once was. To do this, I think the answer is clear. We must go to Haven and protect it at all costs! And everyone quieted down. Yep. <clears throat> Before we proceed any further, I'd like to invite my daughter to come and share her story. Not only as a former member of the White Fang, but also as a survivor of the Fall of Beacon. Oh man. You can do this. Traitors! Ilya. Ilya. Mm -hmm. Cowards. After everything the humans have done to us, everything they've put us through. You're asking us to help them? I know we haven't been treated fairly. Where was their help when the dust companies treated our people like slaves? Where was their help when kingdoms hunted Faunus just for being who they are? Where was my help when my parents were killed in a dust mine? Where? Young lady, progress takes patience and cooperation. The Belladonnas are the worst kind of Faunus. They want us to work with the same people that are trying to hold us down. If you truly, oh, truly man, want to help this is not people, going well. now is the time to support Adam, not the Belladonnas. He will bring about the future that you deserve. And if you are no. unwilling to fight, know that the White Fang will do it for you. Shut up! Thank you, son. There she went. Sowing seeds. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, isn't it weird? <laughs> it is very weird, yes. Okay. 
Poor Oscar. <laughs> he doesn't deserve this. Let's all just take a second and remember that this is very overwhelming for everyone. Huntsmen and huntresses before. Oh. Well, uh, we've never met a person with two souls, so first times all around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. Not to break up the whole getting to know you game, but we need to have a talk. Mind showing us your little parlor trick, kid? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just so you know, I'll still be here. Is he letting him take over? <sighs> it is so very good to see you again, students. Oh, that is fucked up. Wait, what just happened? <laughs> Thank you! Sir. Thank you, Sean. And though I may be the one speaking, Oscar is still present mentally. He's merely handed over the controls, so to speak. Oh. Don't make us do anything embarrassing. I'm afraid this all must be very perplexing. Poor yeah, Oscar. Sorry, and just really kind of hard to believe overall. <laughs> <laughs> Nora. It's good to see you children still have your sense of humor. No, you've all been through tremendous hardship already. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not your fault. He kind of. It's all my fault. Are we gonna hear a bit more here? I told you once that I made more mistakes than any man. Yes, woman, yes. Child and so many theories place. have sprung from that. Explain. I wasn't exaggerating. I'm cursed. Thousands of years I have walked the surface of remnant, living and dying and reincarnated. He is super old! Minded soul. The Professor Ozpin you all met was not my first war, and clearly wasn't my last. It's an extraordinarily strenuous process on everyone involved. Is he gonna take over, so, Oscar? What are you? I am the combination of countless men who have spent their lives trying to protect the people of Remnant. With every That's... rebirth, my soul is eventually merged with another. And I am changed. But my memories stay with me. This curse was bestowed upon me by the gods because I failed to stop Salem in the past. But we must stop her now. And how do we do that? Why is it happening? We start by ensuring the safety of the relic of knowledge. What the fuck is happening? Why is... Oh, baby. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, look who's awake. <laughs> what? What's going on? Where am I? You know, I never thought I'd see a shade in this camp. Spring Maiden. <laughs> you put Martin Astor down, you bitch. Straight to the point. I like it. We don't normally deal in trafficking people. Not really worth our time. But once we realized we had a schnee, that changed. You're going to ransom me back to my father. Is that it? It's a shame you're a schnee. You'd probably do quite well around here. I would never sink to your level. <laughs> 
hide and cooperate, and you'll be back in your mansion before you know it. <sighs> Don't make this complicated. What's going to make this complicated is when my sister finds out that I didn't make it to Mistral. Winter. You know my sister, don't you? Winter Schnee, special operative of the Atlas military. She's in Mistral now, and when she hears I'm missing, it won't take her long to find me. And you. <laughs> Do they know something that we don't know? What's so funny? <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's more funny or sad. But you're clearly out of the loop. Your sister isn't in Mistral anymore. No Atlas personnel are in Mistral anymore. General Ironwood closed the borders and recalled all of his little troops and tin cans. No. No one is coming to rescue you. No. I need to see Winter again. No. But Yang's kind of coming. <laughs> We were stuck at a dead end, but now we can just take little cute boy Austin to the <laughs> thing straight. Please don't call me that. <laughs> That's the best idea. Oh, uh, Nora. But I thought the headmasters all took their orders from you. That was the intention. Four lieutenants I can trust, especially during times of reincarnation. But Crow told me about your meeting with Leonardo. He isn't just behaving irrationally. He's disobeying specific instructions I had left him. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I don't want to rule out any possibilities either. No one outside of this room knows that I have paired with Oscar, and I think it may be best to keep it that way. Play things close to the chest until we got a better hand. Poor Oscar. Precisely. Now, we have two steps ahead of us. The first is enlisting the aid of more huntsmen. But the Mistral Council doesn't own every huntsman in the kingdom. And I've been here enough times to know where we can find some more. So long as they're trustworthy. <laughs> you can trust them to put up a good fight. I'll throw together a list tonight. Crow! Good luck with that. Oh, good luck. Oh, that, that hurts. We can move on to step two. What's step two? Getting you four into fighting shape. <laughs> we already know how to fight. You can only fight so long as you have Crescent Rose, but you're still lacking in hand to hand. That's moment. a good point, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Mr. Ark, I'm glad to hear you've improved, but sorry to say you've yet to unlock your semblance. Yes, can we do that, please? You still have a ways to go before you're ready to pose any real threat against Salem and her forces. Didn't say anything about Nora and Ren. And Oscar can give me <laughs> temporary control, he'll need to strengthen his body and his aura. Wait, what? <laughs> inherit my muscle memory in time. Practice will expedite oh, the process. Oh, Oscar. But if Crow's out looking for Huntsman, then who's going to teach us? <laughs> I believe I was the headmaster of Beacon Academy. Show off. We have a Salem were to plan an attack, it makes sense that it occurred prior to students' return. It's not a time. It's better than nothing. I need a screen cap. <laughs> Just don't expect me to go easy on you. And Oscar's back. <laughs> Oscar. Come on, baby. You can do it. Aww. She made a little night. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Oh. <laughs> okay.
I'm trying to think about what to do with all this information. I guess I'll start with Weiss. She's she's been in better circumstances. This is a uh, not great, but everyone's saying that that chick's a spring maiden since she prom features so prominently in the opening, and I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about her yet. Um, since we've only gotten like two minutes of screen time with her. But, uh. Winter. It makes sense that she'd be called out because we all knew that General Ironwood was closing the borders. I don't know why that didn't occur to anyone before now, especially all like the fan theorists and stuff. <laughs> Because especially since in her character short, they featured heavily on that phrase, I won't always be there to save you. Everyone thought that meant death flags for Winter, but it just meant that she's literally not there to save her <laughs> right now. Weiss is going to have to do it by herself. Unless, of, for like some reason, Winter didn't obey orders, but that doesn't really seem like her right now. So... Weiss is going to have to get out on her own. And she can do it. I know she can. Even if she doesn't have her sword, she's still got her semblance. I'm not too worried. And also, we know that Yang is probably heading to the camp. So, there's that, too. <laughs> the whole thing with the Belladonnas in Menagerie... I mean, that went about as I had anticipated. The whole speech and everything. <laughs> Just... It was pretty much all I expected them to say. And they said good things. But... Ilya. But even before that, when he said that they should go to Haven and protect it, Everyone just stopped. Like, they were willing to agree with his actions until it meant actually putting themselves out there to help. Which is understandable in most cases, but I don't know, it just seemed kind of curious how it happened here. I'm not saying I, I disagree. I understand where they're coming from, but... But what Ilya said, like she didn't like outright attack, but I think she did sow the seeds of doubt necessary within the Faunus, which is not going to be good in the long run at all. I do have to, well, of course I have to disagree with what she said about how the Belladonnas are the worst type of Faunus. They want us to work with the same people who have been holding us down. But... That's the thing. I mean, anger and attacking people can only get you so far. But if you want to bring about real peace, real change in that direction, in any circumstance, you have to work with the enemy that's willing to help you. You have to find common ground and work toward that equality together. It's it's difficult, indeed. It's always messy. But I do agree with that stance, that place that the Belladonnas are coming from. And I hate Adam. Let's just, let's just say that one more time. I hate Adam. I hate him with a burning passion. And then let's, uh... Let's get to that Goliath in the room, shall we? Um... Well, they finally put an end to all the speculation and fan theories about what Ozpin is. And it was not what I was expecting in the slightest. Not at all. Oh, 
cow. I found myself having difficulty while watching it being able to move past what this is doing to Oscar. Because Ospin's background, it's that he He's been walking Earth for thousands of years, but it's not been him. When he dies, he takes over and combines souls with his host, where it seems like that the host is just gonna get absorbed into what is Ozpin, and that's... I just feel so bad for Oscar. I'd feel bad for anyone in that position. He doesn't deserve it. He's so innocent. All he wanted to do was change the world. And now he's being, like, dragged into this almost, like, hive mind of a being. And I feel so bad for him. And I didn't anticipate Ozpin being able to take control of the body. And, like, that's... I feel really bad for Oscar. That's that's my main thing here. I feel so bad for him. Like he said that it was a curse the gods placed on him for not being able to defeat Salem in the past, but I kind of feel like it's a curse placed on tons of innocent man men throughout humanity. <laughs> like yeah, he his conscience has been around for millions of years. But it's also destroying the lives of the men he's taking over. So, like, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it was... It was kind of cool to see how, like, some other little fan theories or fan comics were kind of... proved slightly right in the show. Like... The way, uh, Oscar was kind of looking in awe at Ruby. That was adorable. I don't necessarily ship it, but I, like, really, especially since now we know what Ozpin is. Like, if there were some way to get Ozpin out of Oscar, that'd be fine. But, like, their souls are combining and, like, he's super old and that's mm, not okay. But, yeah. And then the whole, like... Nora freaking out over over Oscar just reminded me of that fan comic. I can't remember who did it, but it was like my favorite thing when it first came out. That was like Nora trying to adopt Oscar. Like, friend, we have a son now. Like, that was adorable. I, I should find it and link it, but yeah. So those moments were cute, but heavily sh overshadowed by all the other new crazy information. So Crow is going to be leaving them, which I'm sad about. I want Crow in every episode of Ruby. <laughs> Sorry, favorite character. But... He's going to be leaving them to find more hunters and huntresses to help protect Haven. Which, if he's doing that, it would be really cool if we got to see some of the older faces from Mistral that we saw in the first three volumes. Specifically, I want to see the rest of Team Sun. But there are also other teams that I would love to see again, like Auburn. Like, yeah. It should be cool if we saw him again. I would die. But, anyway. So, Ozpin's taking over training them training well for one his own body <laughs> he's training oscar <laughs> but then training the others as well like he didn't say anything about nora and ren which is funny because they are like really great fighters but um he did point out two very good important things number one which was shown in the yang short ruby can't fight without crescent rose she can't. She relies on her weapon too much. And as we've seen in previous volumes, especially volume two, once her weapon's gone, she just gets her ass kicked by whoever's at hand. Usually Roman Torchwick. But yeah, she needs to not lean on that crutch so much to become a better fighter. And Jean, he has no love to semblance. 
Ozpin unlocks Sean's semblance, I will be so happy. I want to know what his semblance is. I want to know. I want to know so bad. But yeah, that's where we're at. That line in the intro is really hitting home. The thing is looking bleak and they're bound to get worse. And it's probably going to get so much worse in next episode. But anyway, this was great, as usual. Thank all of you guys for watching. If any of the Kruby happens to be watching, thank you for the beautiful work you're doing. You make my week with these. You make my life with these. I'm so obsessed. And that was so well done. And just thank you guys so much. I love you all. And I hope to see you in the next video.